Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Bertha Ayi coming to you with a word of inspiration. This morning, I will be sharing something with you on how to have faith in God. My hope is that by the end of this message, your faith in God will increase, or if you didn't have faith, you will start having faith in God. Jesus said a string of four words in a sentence to Peter in the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 22, that I would like us to pay attention to this morning. Jesus said to Peter, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Now, the preamble to this is that just before this, something had happened. And Jesus had to go on and explain to his disciples how to operate in faith. So here's what had happened earlier. Jesus had approached a fig tree the night before because he was hungry. He found nothing on it. In Mark 11 verse 13, Jesus told the unfruitful fig tree, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. Immediately nothing happened. The disciples moved on. I don't think they even made notice of it, although the Bible says and the disciples heard it. Within 24 hours, though, when they came by the next morning, the fig tree had dried up from its roots. In Mark 14, 21, Peter expressed dismay. He said, Master, the fig tree that you curse has withered away. And that is when Jesus said, have faith in God. Jesus was telling his disciples, in a way, why should this surprise you? This is the normal operation of any human being. You just have not been using it. Please use it. Try it. It works. That's what he was trying to tell them by those four words. Then he proceeded to tell them what they should do. He wanted to explain to them that it's been there all along. He said in verse 23, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. And in verse 25 he says, And when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any, that your Father which is in heaven may forgive you of your trespasses. For if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. In so saying, Jesus was tying forgiveness with faith and letting your faith get to work. If you don't forgive, your faith will have no effect. So if you have something against somebody right now, even before I finish what I'm saying, determine to forgive that person. Let go. It makes God big in your life. It tells God that, you know what? God, you can take care of anything that I bring your way. So let's go back. He said, whosoever. It means that this is not exclusive to Jesus. Jesus was trying to tell them, you know what? Don't even think it's because I'm Jesus that I was able to speak to this victory. I'm telling you, my disciples, that if you are able to say unto any mountain, and I don't think he actually meant an actual mountain. I think he was, Jesus was referring to any situation that looks unsurmountable or actually anything. He was just using the mountain to illustrate that even the biggest situations can be moved by faith. And so the smaller ones can be moved by your own words. He did not limit it to anyone. He just said, if you have faith in God, you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed. So it starts off with a few things. Number one, anyone who has a strong desire of an achievable goal. Number two, believe that because you are connected to God who can do all things in the realm of the spirit, if you say your desire. So here is the secret word or the, the, the word for today. Say it, say it, say it. Because as you say it, it's done. Spiritually, receive it. 
Number five, do not doubt it after you've said it. Number six, wait for it. You shall have it. No time limits. For Jesus, it took a whole day. For you, it might take an hour. It might take two days. It might take 10 days. But remember, a thousand years are but a day in God's sight. For Jesus, it took one hour. Just say it. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. Oh, how exciting. What is it in your life that you need to be saying something to? In Hebrews chapter 11, Paul goes on to define faith. He says, and now faith is... Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, woo, by faith, by it, the elders obtained a good report. It says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Now, it says that faith is a substance faith is a substance it is an evidence let me try and explain imagine you go and purchase a piece of land and you you maybe you haven't even seen the land you just saw it on a piece of paper they drew the area for you and then they gave you an indenture or a deed you are holding a piece of paper you are far removed from the land in fact the land may be in another country or in another part of the united states but you have the title deed. It is your evidence that you own the land. Or let's say you go to Sears. Let me bring it home. You go to Sears to purchase a refrigerator. It's so big they can't deliver it. They'll say, oh, they'll deliver it in two weeks. But then they give you a receipt. That receipt is your substance. It's your evidence that you own that refrigerator. In much the same way, your faith is your evidence that the thing that you have spoken it will come to pass. The currency for buying that refrigerator, buying that land, is what you say. And you have to remember, what you say is very dependent on what you've been thinking. Because out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. If you've been saying wrong things, if you've been thinking of wrong things, you will say the wrong things. If you've been thinking good things, you will speak faith. The Bible says that by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. By faith, Enoch was translated. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Bible says that by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Noah was just told, build me an ark. Hey, it's going to rain. I'm going to send rain. How does he even believe that it will happen? The Bible says because he believed, there was evidence in his heart. Okay, God, I'll do as you say. By faith, Abraham was asked to go to a place where he should receive for an inheritance. Migrate, leave your country, go to another country. The Bible says that by faith, he sojourned in the land of promise. Bible says, Hebrews 11, 11, through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed when he, and he was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. This morning, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Begin to brood on how he's able to come through for you. Begin to believe that he can come through for you. And begin to speak those things. And you don't have to say it in public. Sometimes in, the, in your closet. Just begin to express your faith. Confess that I have this. The situation is complete. I'm able to do this. I'm able to do this. Speak it from your spirit. See here is the thing. You are a spirit man. You just happen to live in a body. So when your spirit begins to speak. You are able to receive things. So look at what he said. He says. When you pray, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, first believe that you received it. So your spirit can actually receive that document. You remember I was talking about the title deed. See your spirit man actually receiving what it is. Because Jesus said when you pray at the point of prayer, 
you don't have the thing, but in the spiritual realm, receive the title deed and begin to walk around with it. Like Abraham, begin to rejoice. The Bible says that Abraham considered not his body, which was yet dead, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God for as much as he knew. He started rejoicing because he had the evidence in his spirit. His spirit man had already received the son that he had been praying for. So he started rejoicing. And after you receive it spiritually, wait for it. Mm. Wait for it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, and it will speak. Wait for it. Walk by faith. Have faith in God. And Jesus said your faith can be little, and it can be great. Faith can actually be seen. Go with me to Mark 20, chapter Matthew 8, 23 to 27. The Bible says, and when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, in so much that the ship was covered with waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful? O ye of little faith, little, small faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Remember, again, Jesus just used words, right? He rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Verse 27, but the men marveled and saying, Hey, what manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Little faith. And then in that same Matthew chapter 8, before that, go with me, Matthew chapter 8, verse 5 to 13, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him and saying, Lord, my, my servants lie sick at home of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not even worthy. Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should come under my roof. But speak the word only. Hallelujah. And my servant shall be healed. This man understood the principles of faith. Remember, before I was telling you to say it, say it, say it. This man understood how faith works. He says, Lord, I'm not worthy. You don't even need to come under my roof. I have faith. Just speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Then he goes on to say, for I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Oh, verse 10, when Jesus heard it, he marveled. And said unto them that followed me, Verily I say unto you, I have not found, I have not found such faith. So great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into utter darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go your way. As thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in that self same hour. He says, speak the word only. This morning, I challenge you to watch what you say. Speak over your marriage. Speak over your body. Speak over your children. Speak over your work. Speak over your future. Speak over everything that you want to see. Your goals, don't just write them down. Speak over them. Put life into them. Because you're a spirit. God has given you the power and dominion to speak things. That's what Jesus came to teach us. He says, whosoever... Speak the word. Many years ago, my general overseer of my church, International Central Gospel Church in Accra, back in 1988, he would tell us, we're going to build a university. We're going to build a university. And those times, it sounded so far away. What is this man talking about? We're going to build a university? We barely even finished the temple we sit in. But he had faith. He kept on speaking it. And today... Central University sits on a beautiful campus in Accra, Ghana. It was a story of faith. And not only that, I could go on and on and on. What you say comes from what you think and what you meditate on. 
the Bible talks about Stephen. The Bible says he was full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and he spoke. This morning, are you full of faith? What have you been meditating on? Meditate on the right things. Meditate on good things so that when you speak, you will speak out of faith. Words will accomplish great things. Are you full of faith this morning? This morning, in summary, I talked to you about having faith in God. I'm not asking you. It's Jesus who's asking you to have faith in God. Be careful about what you think of, for out of your heart, your mouth will speak. Your words will accomplish great things. Keep saying and keep speaking about faith. Thank you for tuning in this morning. I value you and appreciate your audience. The Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his countenance to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his own peace. And give you his own peace this morning. This has been Dr. Bertha Aye talking to you on how to have faith in God. I'd like to hear from you. Let me know how this program has impacted your life. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.